What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over why you might not be improving in Fortnite. As always, if you guys do find this video helpful and informative, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, and comment down below how long you've been playing Fortnite. So this video is going to focus more on like long term. If you haven't been improving in like several days or weeks at a time, then this video will kind of address some of that. If you get on and have one bad day, uh, it is what it is. It happens. Fortnite is a very day-to-day -day game, and some days you get on and it just feels incredibly weird. But this is going to be more like long-term stagnation or slumping. If you have that one bad day, it's probably not that important to adjust any of this. The first thing is going to be not getting in fights. I've talked about this so many times in several different videos on my channel. But it's pretty natural for players when they first get on a battle royale to want to win and just, you know, get a win as fast as possible or as soon as possible. And this leads to a lot of people camping and playing super passive and just avoiding conflict. And you can get wins doing this. It does work occasionally. But a lot of it is going to be up to, like, timing and the situation. Like, if you are not very good at fighting, but you hear the last other two players or two teams fighting and then you kind of swoop in and third party it, you can kind of like steal that win, but you're not really going to get any wins that you shouldn't, you know, you're not going to outplay people. And the reason why this really matters is because if you're not getting in fights, you're not going to get better fighting. And this is going to be in the long term, you're not going to improve over time. You might get wins this way and you might be able to win somewhat regularly playing this way, but you're not actually getting better more often than not. So if you do have that very passive play style and you feel like you like it just isn't working anymore or you just haven't feel like you've been getting better, it just hasn't been fun, I would definitely recommend getting in more fights because that's really the only way you're going to improve in the game is by fighting other players and getting used to the mechanics and getting used to like how you want to play fights, what works for you, and things of that nature. So definitely get in more fights if you haven't been and you've been playing super passive. The next one is kind of difficult to talk about because it can help you improve, but it can also really hold you back depending on the mindset you have. And that's going to be changing your settings. And this is why at the start of the video, I emphasize this is more of a long term thing. If you just have one bad day, it's probably not a good idea to like change your keybinds and change your settings. But if you've never adjusted your sensitivity, you've never adjusted your keybinds and you feel like there are certain weaknesses to them, like maybe your sensitivity is too fast and you can't control it or too slow and you have like a really hard time tracking opponents up close because of that. And then same with keybinds. If you feel like there are certain inefficiencies to your keybinds, then adjusting these settings uh, definitely can help you more in the long run. And there are a lot of players that just straight up play on default settings because they don't feel like you know, adjusting them at all. And default settings can be okay for like newer players. They're usually a decent starting point. It's very uncommon that those are like the most ideal settings for certain players. So if you do feel like there are certain inefficiencies to your keybinds, like things you just really struggle to do or different fights that you really struggle with, like if it's really long range fights, maybe lowering your ADS sensitivity a bit. If it's a close range uh, bite, so you know, you want to have a sensitivity that feels good to hip fire with. Things of that nature, obviously, it'll vary what you need to change from person to person or what you're struggling with. But I definitely think uh, changing your settings is important. It, it's very rare, like I said, that the default settings are ideal. But you also don't want to fall into the trap of the people that just change their settings 24-7. I know I've known several people like this over the years that like anytime they have a bad day, they're just like changing their sense or they're changing their keybinds or there's like always something in their settings that is like the problem, you know, and not only does this not not ideal because they're never going to be used to their settings if they're changing it too much. They kind of use it as like a, an excuse and they don't really address some of the other things that we're going to talk about later on. So adjust your settings, but don't be like um, too reactive about it, you know, like if it's a consistent problem then adjust them. If it's just a one-off thing or you just have one bad day for whatever reason, I wouldn't recommend changing it uh, because it can, it's like taking a step backwards, but you do take several steps forward if your settings do get better, you know, but if you're just constantly changing it, then you're never able to adjust to it and you're never going to be taking those steps forward. The next thing that I think a lot of players struggle with is they don't worry about like the basic, like fundamental skills of the game. And especially for people who have been playing for a while, they get comfortable, like they kind of learn about these things and they really use them early on. But once they get comfortable playing, they kind of forget about them. There's going to be things like, you know, playing right shoulder peaks, strafing in fights and like jumping and crouching and things of that nature. When you're in a close range fight, you know, using your shotgun, swapping to the spray weapon and then swapping back to the shotgun. Some players just kind of get lazy. They know about weapon swapping. They know it's ideal, but like they kind of just get lazy and don't worry about swapping back, um, you know, opening fights with like good AR tags, uh, playing different angles in your teammates, things of that nature. These are all very common basic things that probably most people already knew when I said them. But when people kind of, 
I feel like people focus on them early on and like get decent at them and then they think that like okay I'm done with that I don't have to worry about that anymore but those things are like the fundamentals or the basics because they are very important and they're just always helpful so if you feel like you're just playing really bad for whatever reason um, some of these if you feel like you have gotten lazy about some of them just like kind of forcing yourself to worry about it for a few games and making like a, co a conscious effort to like actually do it can help you kind of like get back into that habit another thing is going to be bad habits this is another thing that can hold a player back and it is another thing that like early on people might hear about some of these things and then not have that problem but once you've been playing a little bit longer once you've gotten more confident once you feel like you know you can win most of your fights some of these bad habits creep back into people's gameplay and the reason why this is important to address and why i was talking about the settings you don't want to like blame the settings and then not address any of this other stuff is because if you keep that bad habit there it's going to keep costing you and i feel like the longer you let it stick around the harder it is going to be to break it so this could be things like you know not getting those opening air tags uh challenging when you're weak sometimes you do have to challenge when you're weak to kind of alleviate some pressure but there's also times where like you could get heals off but you're like more eager about the fight and I'm guilty of this myself. Another thing I'm guilty of is like chasing people when it doesn't isn't ideal. Like chasing people is often bad, but you know how it is when you like you get someone weak and then you really want to get that kill. Uh, and the more you let these habits stick around, the more problematic it's going to be and the more games it's going to keep costing you. So if you do feel like you're just not improving or you just keep losing because of things that you don't feel like... Uh, like you should be losing to oftentimes it's one of these like kind of bad habits holding you back um it is inconvenient to like figure out which one it is i feel like the easiest way to find out or the most efficient way would be to watch your games back and replay mode but no one wants to do that at all you know it's like pretty extra to do that it's more of like a thing comp players do but if you do feel like you're just playing really bad for whatever reason uh it is crazy how many things you'll see if you watch your games back that you're just like, what was I doing there? And I, I know this firsthand because I edit all of my own videos. So like I end up watching a lot of my gameplay in like a roundabout way when editing videos. Another thing that can really stop people from progressing is going to be relying on gimmicks or like super overpowered items. And this is a problem because Fortnite always has these overpowered items, but they change season to season. So like this season, it might be something like the ODM gear or the heavy sniper. Obviously, the heavy sniper takes skill, but some players use it as like a bailout and they just play off that entirely. And if they don't hit their snipes, they're not able to fight, you know? Um, and then same with the ODM melee. If someone's like only way to win fights is that, not only is it not that great, like it's not that uh, reliable. If they get shot, they're going to lose. But also, it's not going to be around for a long time. If you're good at fighting with like AR, shotgun, SMG, no matter what the meta is, there's probably going to be some variation of those items in the game. Whereas like uh, Chapter 3 Season 4, for example, if someone's entire playstyle relied on the goo gun, that was effective in Chapter 3 Season 4, and it was very good. And there's a lot of people who took advantage of it, like myself included. But if your entire playstyle is that, it can really cost you in the long run. At Snipers, this happens to, for a lot of players. At Chapter 3 Season 4, we had the Hunter Bolt Sniper in the game. It was very good. Some people's playstyle very much warped around that. And then chapter four, season one came out, there was no snipers and those people, you know, had to adapt to that. And it's one thing to use the gimmick items, like I said, or the overpowered items. They're they're in the game and they're broken. You probably should use them, but you don't want to be like that. That's your only way that you can get kills, you know, like the lightsabers are coming back to the game this week. There will likely be some people who use them a lot and they're going to be annoying. But once they're gone, those people are going to have to adapt again. Uh, and it's it does cost them in several instances from what I've seen just based on, you know, reading comments about people from the game. Whenever there's like one of these super overpowered weapons that gets vaulted, I always get comments of people talking about how like difficult it is for them to play the game without that. Uh, the next thing is going to be counterintuitive to some of you, and that's just going to be playing too much. I feel like this can lead to people making bad habits or not worrying about the fundamentals or, you know, relying on those gimmick items too much is when they're playing a ridiculous amount of time. I feel like you kind of just go into autopilot mode and then you're not thinking about it. This will also happen, I feel like, uh, for me, if I'm like hungry or tired of playing, I feel like I go into autopilot mode a lot and don't really think about what's going on in the game, just kind of reacting and pushing people at it as it is. And you make a lot of mistakes doing this. And, you know, if you're consistently playing, and this kind of like autopilot mode, those mistakes are going to become habits and they're going to like keep costing you game and game again, like I was saying. So it is good to play if you want to get better, like the more time you put in, the likely the better you're going to get. But there is obviously a point where you're overdoing it. And if you're someone who's been playing bad for several days and you're like kind of getting tilted about it, you're just going to keep playing worse. So taking a break is oftentimes going to be one of the best things you could do. You could change nothing, 
but just don't play for a day or so and then come back and you're probably just going to immediately start playing so much better because you're going to be, you know, more like present within the game mentally and not necessarily on autopilot. On the flip side of that, if you don't play enough, you're likely not going to improve. You know, if you have two hours a week to play, it's going to be difficult for you to get better. Like the more time you put into the game, the more you're going to get. And that goes with anything, you know, like if it's studying the gym, whatever, like you have to put the time in to actually improve. Uh, so if you aren't able to play as much, that could be one reason why you're seeing your skill regressing. Creative is very good for this. Uh, there's so many like creative mini games out there, uh, like aim training practice maps, as well as just like general fighting maps that allow you to get in uh, like more value of your playtime in a shorter duration. It's like much more efficient to play creative in order to like get in fights. Like you could get in 20 fights in creative and the time it takes to play like half a BR match, you know, there's just more downtime in BR. So if you feel like you haven't been improving and you don't have as much time to play, creative can be really good for this. Another thing that can really hold people back if they don't have enough time to play or they're not really following the game as much is gonna be not keeping up with updates because Fortnite is a game that is always changing and always getting updated. Uh, and this could be a reason why you aren't improving because the things that you're using might have gotten changed. Like this season, we've seen zones gets reworked um, and updated over the course of the season. There's been new weapons and mobility items, augments, as well as changes to the existing weapons and mobility items and augments. Like, for example, the Havoc shotgun, uh, the Mythic version got nerfed. The Pulse Rifle got nerfed. If you were someone who was like uh, really reliant on getting the pulse rifle. It's still good, but it's not as busted as it was before, you know? And then same with the zones. They updated zones, I think, um, the 19th. So like it was relatively recent and they changed zones again. And if you didn't know about that change or you didn't pay attention to that change and it didn't, you didn't really like change how you were playing end game as a result of that change, uh, it definitely, you know, can impact your game. So just keep in, keep up with updates. I do make videos on them like every week, every time there's like a major update. I made an update about, uh, I made a video about the zones this week and how they changed them. And like they, they often do these things without really saying anything in game. Like they'll post it on Twitter or like some other community pages, but there's a lot of changes in this game that unless you're like very active within the community, uh, they're, you're going to not notice them. And then the final thing that could make it feel like you're not improving is going to be skill-based matchmaking because Fortnite, like most multiplayer games at this point, has skill-based matchmaking. So like when you start out playing the game, you'll be playing against mostly AI and like newer players. And then as you get better, you'll start to play against better and better players. And that, you know, makes sense. But it also can create a weird uh, like kind of situation where people feel like as soon as they get better, they just get put in harder lobbies. And then like they don't really see any actual improvement. You know, it's not like their KD goes up or their win rate goes up. So I wouldn't worry too much about stats with games that have skill based matchmaking. Stats are mostly irrelevant. So if you feel like you're improving and playing better, but you don't see your win rate going up exactly, that doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't playing better, just more that you might be getting put in harder lobbies over time because that is what happens with this game. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful or informative. If you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, and comment down below how long you've been playing Fortnite. Thanks for watching.